The chemical potential energy of one liter of gasoline is 40 megajoules, but the 20% efficiency of the engine means that only 8 megajoules of input energy becomes mechanical work. The other 32 megajoules heats the metal of the engine or is sent out the exhaust pipe. How far can one liter of gas take a 1500 kilogram car when doing work against the rolling frictional force of 0.03 times the car's weight? The rolling frictional force on one tire is F equals mu sub r mg equals 440 newtons. So this force is 1,760 newtons on all four tires. The work done against the frictional force is W equals FD, which gives D equals 4.6 kilometers. This corresponds to 22 liters per 100 kilometers, which is the way that gas mileage is rated in most countries. The energy content of one gallon of gasoline is equivalent to that of 50 pounds of dynamite which has enough energy to roll a car a few miles. Please press pause to read through these tips for saving gasoline. While a person is motionless, the chemical operation of our livers, kidneys, and brains and such require energy at a rate of about 100 watts or 100 joules per second. A small portion of this involves the mechanical work done to move air and fluids through hearts, lungs, and arteries. We have seen that chemical energies are much greater than mechanical energies of motion. Dernan explains that 25% of our energy is used by muscles in the heart, 19% by the brain, whether we're thinking or not. 27% is the chemical processes of the liver and spleen, and 10% is the chemistry of the kidneys. 19% is heating and digesting and everything else. Metabolism is the total of all chemical processes occurring within an organism and can be measured in terms of oxygen intake as is being done with this masked elephant. Alexander explains that each liter of oxygen reacting with body fat releases 20,000 joules of energy. Oxygen intake measurements determine energy uses while a mass person is running, rowing, swimming, or walking and such. Spacewalking astronauts are necessarily equipped with their own oxygen supply, so their oxygen intake is continually measured as they go about their activities. The oxygen usage of an 87 gram fish shows that it uses 10 milliwatts when still and 60 milliwatts when swimming at a speed of 0.64 meters per second. The speed burst of the fish occurs as it pushes a mass of water equal to three times its own mass. In this action reaction situation, the pushed water is angled mostly backward and moves at one-third the forward speed of the fish. The basal, or resting metabolic rate, R, of an animal depends on the number of cells that it has and so varies with mass as R equals M to the three-quarter power, which is Kleber's law. What is the ratio of rates for a 100 kilogram person and a 15 kilogram dog? Please show that the ratio is 4. Mammals keep warm with body hair, but upright walking uniquely warms us human beings. As our primate ancestors became bipedal, they lost body hair. This is known to have occurred 3 million years ago because the DNA of head and pubic lice diverged some 3 million years ago. Human beings are one of the few species that can run for long distances. A deer runs faster than a person, but only for a few hundred meters. A deer will run when it sees a person. Our gatherer-hunter ancestors could run down a deer by repeatedly getting it to run one short distance after another until it became overheated and could run no more. Across many species, the surface area A of an animal varies with its mass as A equals M to about the two-thirds power. 
A creature retains heat through its volume and radiates heat through its surface area. Mice and cats have little volume, so they retain little heat. For example, I know one cat who likes to stay in the attic, which is 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Our babies are all surface area and no volume, so we use many blankets to keep them warm. Animals over 100 pounds hold more heat than they radiate away. When adults feel cold or hot, children and small pets will not agree. Human body temperature is 37 centigrade or 98.6 Fahrenheit. We adults are better at heating than cooling our bodies. We more easily bear an outdoor temperature that is 50 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than our bodies then we bear 2 degrees Fahrenheit above our body temperature. Energy is stored in a material as the kinetic energy of motion of atoms, so heat is another form of energy. The average kinetic energy of the atoms of a material is related to the absolute temperature T of that material by 1 half mv squared equals 3 halves kBT, where kB is Boltzmann's constant which serves as a conversion factor between energy in joules and temperature in Kelvin. The ideal gas law is a work energy equation and can be written in terms of the total kinetic energy of atoms, the volume of the gas, and the pressure P, which is work per unit volume. This is Radhakrishnan's comparison of the energy per meter that animals use to swim, fly, or walk. Walking species lie along this line, flying species along this line, and swimming species lie along this line. It takes more energy per meter to walk than to fly, and it is easiest to swim. You may have found that the slightest push sends a kayak many meters across the lake. In their report, the mechanics of six-legged runners, full and two, explain that despite differences in body form, the mass-specific energy of 0.9 joules per kilogram meter that an animal uses to walk a given distance is the same for insects, crabs, mammals, and birds. This energy usage scales with body mass and is relatively independent of body form, leg number, and skeletal type. For example, a 5 kilogram cat uses 5 kilograms times 0.9 joules per kilogram meter equals 4.5 joules per meter, and a 6,000 kilogram elephant uses 900 joules per meter. When this cat eats 1 ounce of fat, which contains 1,130,000 joules of energy, how far will this enable the cat to walk? The cat converts 10% of that energy which is 113,000 joules into useful muscle motion. The distance that the cat can move is given by x equals 113,000 joules divided by 4.5 joules per meter equals 25,000 meters or 16 miles. Heating one ounce of fat supplies enough chemical energy to enable this cat to run around for a few days, exchanging chemical for kinetic energy in search of another ounce of fat to eat. We can be moving animals because stored chemical energies are much greater than mechanical energies of motion. How far can a 100 kilogram person walk from that ounce of fat? Please show that the answer is 0.8 miles. A 6,000 kilogram elephant could walk only 20 meters. This is the Harris-Benedict equation. In the year 1919, they published their report, A Biometric Study of Basal Metabolism in Man. They measured the age, height, weight, and basal metabolic rate of a large number of persons and then fit the data with this equation. Here is equation for males or females given in the U.S. or the metric systems. For example, here is the calories needed per day by a male and female, 18 years old, 5 foot 8 inches, 150 or 110 pounds. Males use 1750 calories per day, while females use 1370 calories per day. 
with a moderate infection, males need 2150 calories and females 1670 calories per day. We notice that a slight sunburn makes you feel as tired as if you had run a marathon because it takes a lot of energy to build a few grams of cells. Stored chemical energies are much greater than mechanical energies of motion. Add 20% to this amount to account for your mechanical motions. Go to this website and enter your height, age, and desired weight, and you will know how many calories per day that you need to eat. No matter what your starting weight is, after some months you would weigh the amount selected. The amount we eat is five times more influential on our weight than is our activity. People weighing 110 to 150 pounds need only 1,300 to 1,800 calories of food per day, while a person weighing 200 pounds needs 2,100 calories per day. Food labels in the U.S. say that an average person needs to eat about 2,000 calories per day, which is 10.5 million joules per day. But the average person in the U.S. eats 3,600 calories per day. On the average, those of us in the U.S. should eat about half as much as we are eating. A restaurant-sized plate of food provides a day's worth of energy in a single meal. About 80% of the trouble with our weight is due to portion sizes. The lack of exercise accounts only for the remaining 20% of the problems caused. Each day, we eat about 10 handfuls of food, each having 200 calories. The energy content of various foods differs by a factor of only 2 to 5, rarely 10. For example, we get a day's supply of energy by eating either one pound of meat or six pounds of potatoes. We store an energy of 270 big C calories equals 1.1 million joules per ounce of fat. The textbook links to the U.S. Department of Agricultural website for a list of the caloric, fat, and nutritional contents of most every food. After eating 200 calories, or 1.1 million joules, which is one handful of food or one candy bar, how far can we push a 10 kilogram or 22 pound box along the ground whose coefficient of friction is 0 0.9? We will be able to convert about 10% of that consumed energy into 113,000 joules of mechanical work. The mechanical work done against friction is W equals force times distance equals mu k m g x equals 113,000 joules. Please show that x equals 1,280 meters, which is 113,000 joules divided by 1,280 meters equals 88 joules per meter. Try to put yourself in this place by imagining the difficulty of pushing 22 pounds for that distance. Yet it requires only 200 calories of energy input and 20 calories of mechanical work output. Earlier we calculated that a 100 kilogram person uses 90 joules per meter in walking. So the energy used to walk and to push the box against friction is then 88 joules per meter plus 90 joules per meter times 1280 meters equals 228,000 joules. How many breaths of oxygen are needed to do this? 228,000 joules divided by 20,000 joules per liter times 0.1 liter per breath equals 114 breaths. This means that a 100 kilogram person has to eat just one candy bar to push a box 0.64 kilometers or to walk 1.28 kilometers. If you cut 500 calories per day to lose 10 pounds, how many days do you have to diet? The number of calories in 10 pounds of fat is 270 calories per ounce times 16 ounces per pound times 10 pounds equals 43,200 calories. To lose 10 pounds, the number of dieting days is then 43,200 calories divided by 500 calories per day 
equals 87 days, which is an eternity. If your mass is 75 kilograms, how far do you have to walk to lose 10 pounds? A 75 kilogram person uses 75 times 0.9 equals 67.5 joules per meter. The food energy that you have eaten has already been stored as fat containing 43,200 calories of energy and 30% of this stored energy becomes useful muscle motion. You'll get 12,960 joules of useful muscle motion. A 75 kilogram person loses 10 pounds by walking a distance of 12,960 calories times 4187 joules per calorie divided by 67.5 joules per meter equals 800 kilometers, which is 500 miles. It would take a couple of weeks to walk that far. The National Institutes of Health produce this table of calories burned by a 150-pound person doing various tasks. We've seen that these numbers scale linearly with mass, so if your mass is three-quarters of 150 pounds, then you multiply these values by three-quarters. Heat energy is the thermal motion of the atoms and molecules which comprise the material. The greater the number of atoms in motion, the greater the total heat energy. Faster atoms have more kinetic energy, which also means that they have a higher temperature through the Boltzmann conversion factor between kinetic energy and temperature, which was 1 half mv squared equals 3 half kT. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the atoms of a material. Heat is a measure of the total energy of the material. A cup of water and a bucket of water might have the same temperature, but the bucket of water has more heat. When a fast atom collides with a slow atom, there is a decrease in speed or temperature of the fast atom and an increase in speed or temperature of the slow atom. This is said to be the flow of heat energy. Heat travels from fast to slow atoms, which also means that heat travels from hot to cold materials. The heat flow through a material in joules per second depends on the difference in temperature across the material. The heat flow increases with surface area, decreases with the thickness of the material, and depends on the thermal conductivity or insulation value of the material. For building materials in the U.S., Thermal conductivity is indicated by the R value of the material. Higher R values conduct less heat per second. Air flows into and out of your home through cracks in walls and window mounts and around doors and electrical outlets. If you put your hand near an electrical outlet, you can feel the airflow. The air in your home is completely replaced a few times per hour, and this incoming air must be cooled or heated, preferably with a heat exchanger. Of the energy flowing out of your home, 45% goes through cracks in walls, window mounts, around doors, and electrical outlets. 20% flows through the basement, and 15% through the walls. This heat loss is reduced by using insulation having a higher R value. 15% goes through the window area. This heat flow is reduced by using double windows or by shading or covering the window during the summer and covering the window in winter. A shade tree works wonders to cool the house in the summertime. 5% of the energy goes through the roof. This heat loss is reduced by using attic insulation having a higher R value. What is energy used for in the average U.S. home? 43% of energy consumption was used for heating, 19% water heater, 21% cooking, washing, drying, and electronics, 8% air conditioning, 5% refrigerator, and 3% lights. 
In the U.S., we have those giant water heaters that run 24 hours a day, while in Europe, water is instead heated on demand. You can reduce your home energy costs by making simple changes in lighting, heating, and cooling. A home energy audit analyzes your existing energy use and recommends changes. Audits can be done at your home and they are available online from Lawrence Berkeley Lab, for example. Here are the sources of energy that are consumed in the U.S. Petroleum, natural gas, and coal still supply the lion's share. In recent years, the nuclear share has shrunk from 20% to 8%. For the first time ever, renewable energy supplies a slightly greater portion than does coal. How is the produced energy put to use? We see 16% residential, 12 commercial, 35 industrial, and 37 transportation, which consists mostly of autos and trucking, along with smaller portions from bus, plane, train, and boat and such. The EIA also compares the U.S. to the rest of the world, and it provides the history of energy and future predictions of energy. The sun converts energy stored as mass into the energies of motion, heat, and light. Sunlight spreads out in all directions. The earth receives 2 times 10 to the minus 9th, or 2 billionths, of the sun's energy output, so the sun could power 1 billion earths. The earth's outer atmosphere, above the clouds and weather, receives 1360 watts per square meter from this sunlight, for a total of 20 times 10 to the 15 watts. About 200 watts per square meter reaches the ground in mid-latitudes on cloudless days. Incoming sunlight hits directly at the equator but glances along the poles. The sunlight hitting any particular spot on the surface of the earth varies with season, latitude, and time of day. Each square meter of surface area absorbs four times as much sunlight energy during long summer days than on short winter days when the sun is low. Can you imagine how cold the surface of the earth would get if it went just three months without sunlight? This happens each year at the earth's poles. This uneven solar heating and the rotation of the earth drives the winds around the earth. About 34% of the sun's incoming energy is immediately reflected back into space. The other, 66%, heats the atmosphere and its chemical contents, the land surface, and waters before being re-radiated back into space, leaving a net gain of zero energy. This is the flow of energy of the Earth. Of that 66% of incoming energy, 42% heats the land, water, and the air and its chemical contents. 23% evaporates water and drives the Earth's water cycle, and the remaining 1% drives the wind by becoming the kinetic energy of the atmosphere. About one quarter of 100% of the sunlight striking the Earth powers photosynthesis and all life on Earth. Of the sunlight falling on the earth that is absorbed by plant life, about 10% of this energy becomes stored chemical energy within the plant. And of that energy, about 10% is later consumed by the animals that eat the plants. And 10% of that energy is consumed by the animals that eat them. About 10% of the energy of each tropic layer powers the next higher level. The sun is the source of all of this energy. And the mass energy of the sun came from the Big Bang. The 1360 watts per square meter of sunlight that hits the top of the Earth's atmosphere 
is 1,000 times as much power as the 20 trillion watts used by our entire civilization of 7 billion persons, whose combined metabolic rate requires 7 trillion watts. Each person's body operates on 100 watts, and each person is utilizing 300 watts. The sunlight received by the Earth is 5,000 times the power used by the people of the United States. For further comparison, a single hurricane generates 10 times the power used by the United States, while 1,000 10-megaton nuclear bombs would supply U.S. power needs for just one second. Plants are stored sun energy. The plant and animal foods we eat provides the energy needed to breathe, walk, think, love, learn, enjoy, socialize, and talk. Fossil fuels result from buried plant and animal remains. The electrical energy used in our homes, cars, and factories is converted fossil fuel, water, and wind energy, all of which are stored sun energy. In addition to these energy sources, nuclear-powered electrical generating plants convert mass energy. Our civilization runs off all this energy. Each home today uses 1,000 times the energy used in a home just two centuries ago. When people successfully harness fusion power, the power available to each home will soon be 1,000 times as much as we have today. With megawatts of power available to each home, machines can combine carbon and hydrogen and such to make edible organic chemicals and even change lead into gold. With such power available to civilization, will anyone work in a factory? What will life be like? Scientists and engineers have been working on fusion power for almost 100 years. They will succeed in the coming decades.